video I am going to explain the, the pressure uh, swing adsorption column design uh, which is quite similar to the molecular sieves and uh, ion exchange column uh, only difference uh, lies in uh, mole molecular sieves have a very very uh, fine adsorbent uh, and the ion exchange column has uh, resin that has a different purpose but uh, design is quite similar uh, so first of all, uh, we have a process stream physical properties like density and viscosity um, that uh, you can determine from the Aspen Heises and uh, or you can determine it from uh, the empirical correlations uh, given in the uh, literature. Then we finalize uh, the adsorbent type uh, that is taken as a zeolite 5A for methane removal uh, in this case and we also assume initially uh, the cycle time that is taken as 8 hours here in this particular case but uh, on later stages uh, we will verify that uh, if our assumption is good or not otherwise uh, uh, it is an iterative procedure so uh, every adsorbent has its own kinetics uh, and uh, we have Langmuir isotherm here uh, there are many other types of the isomers isotherms uh, but uh, we are considering the Langmuir isotherm here uh, because in, in literature we have uh, parameters, these parameters that are uh, experimentally determined for this particular adsorbent zeolite 5A. So from literature we have taken these values uh, like AM, B and equilibrium loading for this particular adsorbent. So now uh, based on the operating uh, pressure, we can determine the uh, amount of the adsorbent uh, required for uh, the particular amount of uh, methane. So, for uh, actual scenario, this is basically uh, for uh, per uh, adsorbent, per kg of adsorbent. So, based on the uh, amount of uh, methane removal, we can determine the uh, amount of resin required. So we are taking 20% extra resin uh, for this particular case. Uh, we can take it as uh, 25 or 30% as well. Uh, so mass of resin required comes out to be 21.53 kg. So now uh, we have listed uh, here uh, the physical properties of the adsorbent uh, like bed density, uh, particle porosity, torsity, uh, particle diameter, sphericity. So based on uh, the density of the adsorbent, we can determine the volume uh, using the mass determined in the previous step. So from from material balance, we know that uh, process stream has flow rate of 138.27. So using the density, we can convert it into uh, volumetric flow rate. Now for column dimensions, uh, we know uh, that we have determined uh, the volume of the adsorbent previously so l by d ratio lies between uh, 2 to 5 so we can take any value between these so i have taken 4 uh, here l by d ratio so using uh, the volume value we can determine the diameter like here so then uh, we can determine the length using uh, l by d ratio as 4 so uh, sorry here it would be uh, 4 d here so it comes out to be 0 0.848 meter so we basically add uh, some uh, space at the top and bottom of the uh, bed uh, so that is taken as 0.5 at meter at the top and 0.5 meter at the bottom so it becomes uh, total height of the vessel as 1.848 now in order to calculate the uh, saturation time uh, for the bed uh, to verify the assumption we have taken initially as uh, 8 hours so we first determine the initial concentration so we know the uh, amount of methane in the process stream and we know the uh, volumetric flow rate so we can determine the initial concentration uh, then uh, we assume that uh, there is 99% uh, removal of methane uh, using the adsorbent so final concentration will be 0.01 into the initial concentration so we know the equilibrium loading for 0 to 5a is 14.31 percent so which means that w set is 
1431 kg methane over kg adsorbent so after uh, the bed is exhausted we basically regenerate the bed and uh, it is uh, taken assumed that 98% of the be bed is regenerated so uh, w naught that is the uh, amount of methane initially present in the adsorbent is taken as 0 0.02 into this equilibrium loading so it comes out to be 0.002862 now uh, we can determine the uh, superficial velocity using uh, the volumetric flow rate of the process stream and the diameter uh, area of the column so it is determined as 0 0.0444 meter per second so now based on uh, these values we determined previously uh, the length uh, uh, bed density w set and w naught over uh, superficial velocity and initial concentration we can determine uh, the saturation time for the bed which comes out to be 8.39 hours so uh, we can see from here that uh, our initial assumption of 8 hours is good assumption for uh, this particular case now uh, we can find the unused uh, bed length uh, that is lb is equal to lb that is total bed length into tb uh, that is uh, basically cycle time over uh, uh, t static that is time required for complete saturation so uh, length of uh, unused bed uh, bed used comes out to be 0 0.808 and then it can be uh, subtracted from the total length to calculate the uh, unsaturated bed length at the end of saturation so now we can determine the breakthrough loading uh, which is uh, given by this formula so we have uh, all of these parameters so we can substitute these values so we obtain uh, the uh, breakthrough loading as 0 0.1365 so we can clearly see that uh, this loading is uh, less than uh, the equilibrium loading that is 0 0.1431 so which means that uh, operation is good so now we can determine the uh, internal uh, mass transfer coefficient uh, which is given by this formula 10 de over dp so uh, for DE, uh, which is basically effective diffusion coefficient, uh, it is given by diffusivity uh, and uh, porosity over torsity. So we have all of these parameters, so we can determine this effective diffusion. So now we can use equation number 7 to calculate the internal mass transfer coefficient, uh, which comes out to be 7.53 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter per second. So similarly, uh, we can determine the external mass transfer coefficient, which basically uh, relies on uh, Reynolds number and Schmidt number. So we can determine the Reynolds number uh, using the uh, given parameters. Uh, and we also determine the Schmidt number that is uh, basically a combination of uh, different physical properties. So using these two uh, dimensionless numbers, we can find the Schmidt uh, Sherwood number. Uh, which is 1.17 into Reynolds number power 0 0.585 uh, into Schmidt number power 1 by 3. So once we have obtained this uh, Sherwood number, then Sherwood number is basically Kc external into dp by dei. So we basically rearrange it to get the value of external mass transfer coefficient. So substituting these values, we obtain uh, the external mass transfer coefficient as 3.61 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter per second. Then um, we can find the overall uh, mass transfer coefficient, which is given by this equation number 30. So substituting these values, we obtain the overall mass transfer coefficient as 3.44 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter per second. So now we can uh, clearly see that uh, the reciprocal uh, of uh, inverse uh, reciprocal of uh, internal mass transfer coefficient and external mass transfer coefficient show that uh, the uh, controlling uh, phenomena of our uh, mass transfer coefficient is external one because uh, its value is greater uh, now we can move forward uh, to calculate the overall vol uh, volumetric mass transfer coefficient for which we need uh, this a value that is uh, surface area per unit volume so it is given by 6 into 1 minus uh, porosity over sphericity into particle diameter. So we can uh, just multiply this A value with uh, Kc value to obtain the overall volumetric mass transfer coefficient. 
then we need to find uh, the saturated bed length at breakthrough so uh, which is given by this uh, equation number 15 that is vz uh, into tb minus t1 where vz uh, is basically ratio of mass of solute removed per unit time to the amount retained on the adsorbent per unit length of the adsorbent okay so now we can determine the vz value using uh, this equation number 16 uh, which is uh, superficial velocity into initial concentration over bed density into w set minus w so we have uh, each and every parameter so we can find the vz value as 0 0.000025 uh, meter per second then uh, we can find uh, the initial mass transfer rate uh, that is given by this equation so we again have all of these parameters so after uh, substituting these values we obtain the t1 value as 0.000862 so then um, we have each and everything so we can substitute the values to get, to get the saturated bed length at breakthrough that comes out to be 0 0.81 meter so it again shows that uh, uh, the saturated bed length at breakthrough is uh, less than the total length so which means that uh, our design is good